Electronics at Graz University of Technology. Did you know that my inventor, Nikola Tesla, also studied at Graz University of Technology? Unlike him, however, I am planning on actually finishing my studies here. Oh, by the way, talking about finishing stuff reminds me of the IEEE EMC contest which I was asked to participate in. I think I am the perfect fit for this contest since I know all about EMC. After my first performance on stage, one of the audience collapsed because his pacemaker stopped working. After this dramatic incident, I was forced to concern myself with EMC. So I went out and read Clayton Powell's Introduction to Electromagnetic Compatibility. EMC doesn't seem to be that hard to master at all. I don't get why some people refer to EMC as black magic. I simply put the Faraday's kit around myself, so I am fully EMC compliant. It's as simple as that. Ah, Tessie, I think we have to talk. You are really acting as if you were an EMC expert just because you read the book on EMC. Are you really sure you are 100% EMC compliant and aren't emitting any emissions at all? I'm not sure. Have you considered your conducted emissions, for example? What are you talking about? Don't you know the Tesla cars are all about wireless energy transfer? I am not interested in wired transmissions, I will speak to radiate energy. And now my furthest cage takes care of it, so I must be completely EMC compliant as it shields all of my emissions. I mean, you're correct in that your Faraday's cage will shield your radiated emissions. However, there's a lot more to EMC than radiated emissions. In order to be EMC compliant, you have to fulfill a lot of requirements. One of them, for example, being the conducted emissions, where you have to stay below certain levels of emission, which are spread on the cables that are attached to you. Are you freshmen trying to teach me lessons? You probably have not even finished your bachelor studies yet. Whoa, no reason to shout at me like that. I'm not trying to act smart or anything. I'm just offering you to check your conducted emissions in our institute's lab next door. If you want to, we can go check them out. If you really think there's anything to measure, we might as well give it a try. Okay, then come on, let's go. Hey Tessie, welcome to our EMC lab. So what I've prepared for you is I've connected you to a CISPR 16 line impedance stabilization network, which is then connected to an EMI receiver. That way we will be able to quantify the noise you produce on your mains cable. Well, in order to take the measurement, it's quite simple. I just want you to take a deep breath and then to produce a slow and steady tone. That's perfect. And well, now the sweep is done and it doesn't really look good, Tessie. Well, you're over the limits in multiple frequencies, at some points even up to 25 dB microvolts. How's that possible? Who set those limits to be that low? I've done everything to minimize my emissions. Does this mean I am not EMC compliant after all? Well, I'm afraid you're not gonna get a CE or FCC marking in this condition. Well, you are a solid state Tesla coil with modern power electronic devices which are configured in a half bridge configuration. So you can see yourself as a big switching converter which switches at very high frequencies. And those switching activities are actually the frequencies we can see on the EMI receiver. So what's happening is you're drawing very fast and very high current pulses from the mains which can then cause both common and differential mode noise. Common mode noise. You can differentiate between common and differential mode. Common mode means that the noise is spreading in the same direction on both wires, live and neutral, at the same time. 
common mode emission is for example caused by a voltage drop on your current return path. Differential mode interferences or differential mode noise for that matter is caused by the symmetrical operating current. So just when you consume a fast current spike, it's a fast differential mode current spike on the mains. Well, don't worry, Tessie, you're not the only electronic device with this issue. Luckily, we're here at the Institute of, of Electronics at Graz University of Technology, which specializes in the field of EMC. So I'm sure we're going to find someone who may have a helpful tip for us. Sounds promising. Thank you very much. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Hi Bernd. Hello Nikolaus. Hello Tessie. How are you doing? Well, Tess is not so great. We just found out she's suffering from severe conducted emissions. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Tessie, you need some filtering. That's what I told her actually. <laughs> well, actually we would design a very special filter for you. Multi-stage filter with common mode and differential mode stages, for example. Well, we are considering the coupling between all the filtering components. But this might take a little bit and I think you need a quick fix. Isn't yeah. It? So what about trying an off-the-shelf filter? Yeah, we can give it a try. So, like this one here. It already has common mode and differential mode stages. So Great. Let's try. Well, yeah, Tessie, let's go back into the lab and try it. Thank you, Bernd. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. See, Tessie, I knew we'd find something for you. I've already gone ahead and installed the filter in your mains connection. Inside of this filter, there are inductors and X capacitors for differential mode and common mode chokes and Y capacitors for common mode noise. Together, they form a filter which filters both common and differential mode noise over a very broad frequency spectrum. So this filter should probably bring you below the limits. Okay, then let's take another measurement. Please once again take a deep breath and then try to produce a slow and steady tone. Looks promising. Well, congratulations, Tessie. You're now below the limits at all frequencies. Oh, what a relief. Thank you so much. Now I am finally really EMC compliant and will get an FCC and CE parking. I don't know where I'd be without the help of you and your colleagues from the Institute of Electronics. Well, you're welcome, Tessie. Now you are EMC compliant regarding conducted emissions. Next time, just come in advance during the design phase and we will improve your circuitry right from the beginning. Of course, heavily filtering your main supply works, but when tweaking the right design parameters, I am sure we'll find a smaller and cheaper filter for you. Then we can also check your performance against radio frequency interferences and maybe that way you will at some point even be awarded a CE mark. Well, in order to be really EMC compliant, many additional tests such as radiated and conducted emissions, transient disturbances such as ESD and many more have to be performed. But let's not frustrate Tessie too much and keep those topics for another video.